most brutal torture methods. Oh my fucking god. And let's do this shit. Yep. Top 10 brutal torture methods there. Necklacing. Necklacing is oh, a necklacing. horrific okay. torture that involves forcing a rubber tire filled with gasoline around a victim's chest and arms and then setting it on fire. The victim may take up to 20 minutes to die, suffering severe burns in the process. Necklacing my ass fucking shit. Report. Report these motherfuckers. Brazilian drug lords are also known to have necklaced their enemies, most notoriously the journalist Tim Lopez in 2002. After he was kidnapped by local drug dealers, his hands, arms, and legs were severed with a sword while still alive. They then stuffed his body in gasoline-filled tires and set it on fire. What? Oh my... Bro! The bone snapping ligament tearing torture device known as the rack. Oh, the bone slapping, but the bone snapping ligament tearing the rack. Teams. What the fuck? Essentially, it is a table that has two rollers on either side. The victim's ankles are fastened to one roller and the wrists are chained to the other. A handle and ratchet mechanism attached to one of the rollers is used to gradually increase the tension on the chains, inducing excruciating pain. Over time, the sufferer's joints are dislocated and eventually separate. Oh! One horrifying aspect of this torture is hearing the loud popping noises made by snapping cartilage, ligaments, or bones. Muscles are stretched to the point that they lose the ability to contract, rendering them useless. Fuck off! Oh my god! My god! Fucking shit! Rat in a bucket. Rats yeah, I've will do this. anything to escape an uncomfortable situation. And torturers use this knowledge to their advantage in their sick experiments. A pottery bowl filled with rats are placed open side down on the naked body of a prisoner. Red hot charcoals are then piled on top of the bowl, effectively heating up the pot and making it unbearable for the rats. The rats only way out is to gnaw into the very bowels of oh! the and an attempt to escape the heat. In one documented occasion, during the Dutch revolt in the 16th century, oh Century, a prisoner of war endured this torture. After the rats ate through his flesh and scratched at his intestines, the hot coals were then inserted into his stomach, scolding his internal organs. What? What the fuck? Oh my god! What the fucking shit house? Oh my god, dude! Head crusher. Oh, that sounds the pleasing. The crusher is a device that clamps down on the victim's head, smashing it between a metal plate and a rounded iron cap. As the executioner gradually twists the handle, the victim's skull is slowly crushed. Bone fragments from the skull can puncture the brain, causing spontaneous muscle spasms and, of course, brain hemorrhaging. If the person inflicting the pain wants to torment the prisoner even further, he could strike the metal cap with an iron rod, sending echoing pain throughout the person's body. Oh! In most cases, the victim is killed, but not before the jaw had been crushed and their eyes had popped from their sockets. Oh my! Are you fucking serious, motherfuckers? Oh! Fuck this! I don't even think I can watch this full video, bro. The Tucker, Tucker Telephone Tucker was telephone. an electroshock apparatus used in Arkansas Tucker State Prison in the 1960s and 1970s. Inmate doctors would use this torture device on unruly prisoners. The device worked by placing a ground wire around the big toe of a prisoner while clamping the hot wire to the person's genitals. The Whoa! wires were then hooked up to a telephone that had been modified to send electric shocks. As the phone was being cranked, piercing electrical currents were sent throughout the prisoner's body. <laughs> This call was a series of electric shocks in a row. Any inmate that passed out from the experience would be splashed with cold water and shocked again, intensifying the agony. Oh, oh my god, I can actually feel a little pain in my dick after I just saw that, you know. 
similar to the rack. The German chair is a form of torture often used by the Syrian government against the rebels. When a detainee is captured, they are placed in a metal chair. Their legs and arms are secured to the seat, while the back of the Fuck! Just by thinking of that fucking telephone shit just made me, made my fucking dick cringe, bro. Oh my god. Chair is pulled back and down toward the ground. This causes severe stress on the spine, neck, and other limbs, often causing permanent damage. One man who managed to escape the Syrian torture cell claimed that they stripped him naked and hung him upside down in the chair for 8 to 12 hours a day, for 4 days. He says the pain was so excruciating that he begged his captors to kill him. He still has uncontrollable twitching as a result of the torture. Oh fuck. Please. Flaying, also known as skinning, is an old torture that dates back to 883 BC. It involves different methods to remove the skin from the victim's entire body. The most common form of flaying is to use a knife, inserting the sharp blade just below the chin. The cuts start at the face and work all the way down to the toes. In some cases, the skin would be taken off in small sections and be performed slowly until completely done. What's left is a still living person with exposed muscles, ligaments, and bones, but the face skin still intact. A person could live a few hours up to a day after the skin removal process. Another method involved being severely sunburned and then having the skin peeled off. Oh my god, that is even worse! That is fucking even worse, dude! Impalement. All of these sounds so pleasing. was and is one of the most gruesome ways of dying imaginable. The arms and legs are strapped to the ground by pegs, rendering the person immobile. A large oiled wooden stake is gradually oh forced into God. the body, usually oh into the anus. God. They made sure that the stake wasn't too sharp, or the victim might die too rapidly from shock. There were many instances where victims were impaled through other bodily orifices, or through the abdomen or chest. Infants oh were sometimes God. impaled on the stake, forced through their mother's chests. When the pole was then raised upright, the victim was left to slide down the pole with their own weight. Oh my, what? They, they were allowed to slide down from their own weight. Fuck off. It could take the victim up to three days to slowly die. Three fucking days! Three fucking days with a rod shoved up your ass. Oh my god. The Brazen Bull was an ancient Greek torture device that also doubled as a demented musical instrument. Naked victims were placed inside oh, of a I large hollow brass bull statue. In most cases, the prisoner's tongue is cut out with sharp metal shears before being shoved into the empty bovine statue. Why? The torturers would then light fires underneath the bull and burn Whoa. the person inside alive, raising the heat gradually. The screams of the bull's occupant couldn't be heard because the thick metal casting acted as a sound barrier. The only opening was through the bull's mouth that let out smoke from the person cooking inside. A series of brass tubes were located toward the front of the bull that would resonate the sound of the muffled screams of the tongueless victim. Depending on the intensity of the heat applied under the statue, the prison- Please. Please, God. Please. Can't do this shit anymore. The Judas Cradle. Oh my God. Just look at that shit. Just look at that shit. Just imagine what are they going to do with that shit, dude. Fuck me, senseless. The victim would be raised over top of the structure with the aid of ropes and a harness. As the person is lowered down, the top of the pyramid would be lined up to enter the anus or the vagina oh. and cause unimaginable pain and discomfort. The feet would be bound together so that if one leg moved, the other one would too, enacting more pain. The subject is tortured by intense pressure and stretching of the orifice, eventually succumbing to tears and muscle tissue. Torturers would prolong the interrogations by... Oh the victim off of the seat overnight and then continuing the torture the next morning. Whoa! If the victim didn't die from shock, exhaustion, or impalement, they could have died from infection as the Judas Cradle was rarely clean between tortures. Fuck this shit. Fuck this shit, I'm out of here. I'll see you guys next time.